Now, performance modeling speaks to this idea of uh, representing your system by a theoretical model, analyzing that model to get results, and translating those results back to your system. Now, the crucial thing to remember about modeling is that it, by definition, makes assumptions about your system. And if your system doesn't meet these underlying assumptions, um, you can't use the model. All right, so we're going to use performance modeling to answer questions about our system's throughput and capacity. We'll first look at single server systems. We will then look at a cluster of servers. And then finally, we'll take a step back and see what we can take away for our systems. All right, then, let's get started. Now, say our single server system is a very simple web server. Questions we typically have about such a system are, well, what's the maximum throughput it can sustain without exceeding that response time SLA that we have? And the second question is, well, how can we improve the average response time to give our users a better experience? Um, we're going to answer these questions by modeling our system as a queuing system. The way this works is the requests come in at some arrival rate. If the server is free, they're processed immediately. But if the server is busy processing other requests, the requests will queue. Now, the time a request spends in the queue is called the queuing delay. Um, then when the server is free, uh, the server is going to pick off a request from the queue and, processes it, and process it. And the time it spends processing it is called the service time. And so the response time is simply the queuing delay plus the service time. Now, first things first, the assumptions that we have about the system. Um, well, first, we're going to assume that requests are independent and random. So they're not correlated with each other. They're not correlated with responses, no. The second assumption we're going to make is that requests are processed in first in, first out order, and one at a time. So you can imagine this is a single core, single threaded server. And the third assumption is that we're going to assume that the time it takes to process a request, the service time, that's a constant. So what we're saying is that requests are really the same size. That, that's our assumption. And we're also assuming that there is no downstream saturation. So the network, the database, they're not going to bottleneck. OK, so with this, let's answer our first question. What's the maximum throughput of this server? Well, using our model, let's just reason through it intuitively. As we crank up the arrival rate into the system, we expect the server's utilization, its busyness, to go up, right? There's nothing revolutionary about this. But our question today is, how is it going to increase? And the theory gives us the answer. The utilization law tells us that utilization is simply the arrival rate times the service time, which we're assuming is constant. So the utilization arrival rate graph is linear. It's a line. OK, so, so what? The server's going to get busier. Well. If the server gets busier, the probability that an incoming request will show up and find the server busy and have to queue, that probability is going to go up. So the average queue length is going to increase. So the average queuing delay, the time a request spends in the queue, that's going to go up. Makes sense. But again, our question today is how is it going to increase? And again, the theory delivers. The theory tells us to use the PK formula, which I think is pronounced as Palaxa Kinchine, but we're going to call it PK. And the PK formula tells us that the average queuing delay is equal to this term that depends on the utilization and two other terms that depend on the service time. Now, we're not going to worry about those last two terms because we assumed that service time is constant. So then, looking at that first term, the average queuing delay is directly proportional to u over 1 minus u. Anybody know what that graph looked like in practice? That hockey stick that we all love. Um, 
Basically, what this means is that as utilization goes up, the queuing delay is going to hockey stick. And because response time is simply a linear function off the queuing delay, what this means is that when the server gets busier, the response time is going to hockey stick. This is that infamous graph that we're all familiar with. So applying this to our question, well, what's the maximum throughput of the server? Well, as long as we're in the low utilization regime, increasing the requests per second um, still keeps response time about the same. But once we're in the high utilization regime and the server is busy, it's as busy as it can be, it can't do any more work, increasing uh, the arrival rate means that requests are going to start to queue, right? So response time is going to hockey stick. And in fact, it's going to hockey stick until it crosses that response time threshold we have. So in this case, the maximum throughput of the server is the point where that curve meets that line, which is at about 5,500 requests per second. <laughs> 